Is Lionel Messi lazy? No, of course he isn't. But if most players in the world walked around the pitch for the first few minutes of a match, their coach would definitely bench them. I mean, it's happened to me. So why does Messi do exactly that? This week, on Justin's Case, we're looking at why Lionel Messi walks on the pitch for the first five minutes of every single match. Hi, I'm Justin of Justin's Case. You might recognize me as that guy on Oh My Goals TikTok or that guy on Oh My Goals Instagram. Anyway, this week we are looking at the genius going on in the brain of Lionel Messi. And particularly, what's going on up there in his brain during the first five minutes of every match? Well, it's quite simple really. Messi's brain works differently than most players. So for the first five minutes of every match, he walks around. But, and this is important, his brain is working the whole time. He's walking around instead of sprinting around because he's staying calm. He's keeping his heart rate down, making really clear and rational decisions about what's going on, and then disseminating that information to the rest of the team. Just like how when my boss catches me watching football highlights, my brain is working, Steve, I promise this is the truth. But what is his brain seeing during those five minutes? What is he analyzing? Well, it's similar to scanning. So we often work with our players about how do you actually scan to see where people are, what the gaps might be, identify any weaknesses. Well, it's taking in a lot of information. It's watching the rhythms and patterns of the game. We know that experts are really good at identifying patterns. So for example, for him, it could be defenders, how deep the mid midfield might be sat, etc. So where are the gaps, like people say. But actually what I reckon he's doing is understanding that information and then retrieving more information from his long-term memory from the analysis that they would have done in the week as well. And it's analyzing, analyzing everything, but mostly it's watching the opposition. From there, Messi can see the other team's weakness. He can see which players he should target and how to beat the other team. How do I exploit any weaknesses because he's a, somewhat of a leader or definitely a leader on that pitch is, do we need to change tact a little bit? Um, and then he can communicate that afterwards as well. That's certainly what I'd be looking at for my players, for example. But does it work, really? Para mí no hay, no hay, no hay discusión ninguna de que Leo es el mejor jugador del mundo. No es que haya ganado más ni menos premio ni nada, sino que Es el mejor jugador con, con diferencia, el que marca la diferencia en cualquier partido. I mean, seriously, like, I'm, I'm not even going to answer that question. The man has won six Ballon d'Ors. Of course it works. Does it work? Get out of here. Once he's kind of encoding what's going on and recognizing the pattern, working out what those behaviors look like for the rest of the game. So that could be pressing really hard, that could be running into spaces, that could be receiving the ball in different places, etc. So really, the important bit is the so what, and that's, and that's the behavior. In fact, in 2016 to 2017, it was discovered that of all Barcelona and Real Madrid outfield players, Messi was the one who had on average run the least per match. I mean, that's ridiculous. I don't know about you all, but when I was young, coaches would tell me, run hard, run fast, run a lot, just run. And well, Messi proves that running just for the sake of running is, well, not necessarily the most effective. This year at PSG, we'll see if his analytical work during the early moments of the match will pay off. Lo que estamos descubriendo de Leo, un gran profesional, un jugador increíble, que eso no 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 hace falta decirlo, que se está adaptando muy bien a a su nuevo compañero, nuevo club, a una nueva a una nueva realidad. Es verdad lo que tú dices, quizás esta liga francesa es más abierta, es más de transiciones, es más física. Pero bueno, creo que Leo se puede adaptar a, a, a lo que nosotros vamos a proponer en, en, en nuestra parte táctica. Nosotros somos un equipo que nos gusta dominar los partidos, tener la posesión. But really, I don't think most people should worry because we're pretty sure they will. Everyone else around him will know he's going to do that. So it'll be factored into some sort of game plan in the if Messi's going to do this, then either we sit in a low block or we press high, etc. So everyone knows what's going on. Hey Justin Casers, thank you for joining us for another episode. If you've had a good time here, please drop us a like and subscribe to Soccer Stories. I know some of you want to change the name to Football Stories, but it's not up to me and honestly, Soccer Stories sounds nice. Don't you think? No? Just, okay. Okay, so here is Justin's case on the walking of Messi. If you have one thing that you stick to every single time, not only does it help you feel more familiar, 
in the environment, but also clearly there's a tactical edge to it as well. So actually, I think it's really important for more than just tactics and more than just working out what's going on. It's probably to help him feel a bit more familiar, which is a part of that that amateurs could use or players at lower leagues could use as well. At 34, a lot of players might be walking with a cane at this point. Samuel Eto'o's famous celebration, anyone? But Messi has always been a genius at conserving his energy and he's clearly a genius at watching and analyzing football matches. The fact he can do this is really quite impressive. I mean, even most elite footballers don't have this kind of ability. If I'm being honest, there are times I've tried this in games, but the game moves so fast and changes so quickly that you have to be adaptable at the same time. Los tres que son más importantes en la historia del fútbol son antes de Stefano, Pelé, Maradona y Messi. En este momento Messi es el número uno, porque tiene algo diferente de los otros, tiene una naturaleza, tiene un talento que no, es, no está construido. So all in all, this is a way that even at 34, Messi is still blowing minds. In mine, anyway. So often with my younger players, but I've used it with some pros as well, is especially if they struggle to get into the game uh, in the first five or 10 minutes of the first half. And really what we're looking for there is just a list of behaviors that they can do in that first 10 or first five minutes and then associating a reward or a positive outcome or, or a point to each one of those behaviors. So we might say, for example, uh, running into space, receiving the ball and turning, uh, taking a pass with one touch, for example. So there's loads of different behaviors you could do. So sometimes actually what players are doing, there's more than just moving around and being part of the game. Sometimes there's strategy behind it, like making sure I feel my way into the game, which is often what that game would be. If it was a similar game and you were doing something like that for Messi, it might be the fact that actually for the first five minutes, I just want you making decisions. That's the only thing I want you focusing on. Because if that's what helps you get into the game, then that's the important thing. Whereas for some players, it's about being really active being um, really intense, being really proactive at the start of the game or hitting certain cues at different times. So it's a strategy that we use quite often, but perhaps just not the same way um, that Messi would do it, given his level of expertise. Oh, and hey, speaking of blowing minds, before we go, if you want more content on Messi, we've done quite a few nice ones on Justin's case. Here, you can check out Messi's American Dream, where we talk about if Messi will one day play in the MLS, and if he would do well, if he would dominate there. Or you can look at the dark side of Messi joining PSG. Okay, everyone, that's my take, but don't forget to drop a comment to let me know your case. In the meantime, take care of each other, and we'll catch you next week for more Justin's Case. Now let's spin the globe.